Hi, this is Ryan. In this video, we'll be talking about the principles of fiber optic amplifiers. Here's a typical fiber optic amplifier in the DFG series. You'll see that it has holes at the front here that function as an emitter and as a receiver. These fiber optic cables fit into those holes. And then they clamp down with a lever here. So it transmits that light to and from the fiber optic cable's sensing ends. Now in a bifurcated fiber optic cable like this one, the emitter and the receiver cables meet up into one sensing end. So they usually have a diffuse sensing mode. In individual fiber optic cables, the emitter and receiver have separate sensing ends. So it goes into two pieces and they have an opposed mode configuration. Fiber optic amplifier is the same, it's that fiber optic cable that determines the sensing mode. The most common fiber optic amplifier is mounted DIN rail. These amplifiers have a spring-loaded clip on the bottom and they attach to the DIN rail by hooking one side and then snapping the other side. To remove it, squeeze that spring side in and unhook the other side. This way you can stack multiple amplifiers together in a cabinet or an enclosure, and then those fiber optic cables from that end feed out to all the different places where the sensing occurs. Alternatively, single DIN rail amplifiers can be snapped into these DIN rail shaped brackets and mounted anywhere they're needed. Fiber optic amplifiers may also come in housings more similar to traditional photoelectric sensors, and those will often be mounted by their sides or by the barrel. A fiber optic cable sends light from the emitter through the emitter's cable out into the world. Once there, it can be either reflected by or blocked by things out in the world, and some of that light can get back into the receiver's cable and back to the receiver. To prevent optical interference from other light sources, the emitter's light is modulated and the receiver is looking for that modulated light. The amplifier works by measuring the amount of light intensity that returns to the receiver and its output turns on or off if that measurement of light intensity is more or less than the pre-taught set point. Genuinely, a fiber optic amplifier will have one of two ways to set that light intensity set point, a manual adjustment or an expert teach. The newer and most common amplifiers will have the expert teach. There are several teach modes which we will get into later, but they all require you to either present the sensor on condition, the sensor off condition, or both while the sensor runs through its teach procedure. It automatically adjusts the light intensity set point and the emitter gain to provide for the best sensing contrast. So in this application, we'll show it the on condition, we'll show it the off condition, and then the sensor does the rest. Some older or less common amplifiers have a manual teach where you turn a potentiometer to manually set the set point. In this application, we'll see where on the potentiometer the on condition turns off and then where on the potentiometer the off condition turns on never in this case, and then we'll split the difference. Fiber optic amplifiers are usually built for speed or for maximum power. Our highest speed fiber optic amps can be set as fast as 10 microseconds, which is 100 times faster than a typical one millisecond photoelectric sensor. Our typical amplifiers have a speed setting, which allows you to choose how fast the sensor responds. Fibers excel at many small part high speed applications. For example, wire or thread break detection, mark detection for web control, precise silicon wafer positioning, and tablet counting. Now response time is a trade off with sensing range. As you set a sensor to go faster, its maximum range with a given fiber will decrease. This is kind of like how slowing down a camera's shutter speed allows it to collect more light. Slowing down the response speed of a sensor allows it to collect more light and get more range. 